Jump Festa 2023 is finally over, and we have some insane announcements coming out of this show. According to Gege Akutami, Jujutsu Kaisen very well could be ending in 2024, per his own words. So we'll go over all of that, what it probably means for you, and as well some of the other massive announcements at Jump Festa, like Chainsaw Man getting a new film, and as well One Piece getting a brand new remake of the anime from the creators of Attack on Titan. There is so much to talk about, so let's Let's get into it. If you love Jujutsu Kaisen, Chainsaw Man, Demon Slayer, One Piece, and a slew of seasonal anime like Undead Unluck or Free Run, then this is the channel for you. Get subscribed, drop a like, and let me know what your favorite announcements from Jump Festa 2023 was. So one of the biggest announcements coming out of Jump Festa 2023 was none other than Gege Akutami, the creator, writer, and artist of Jujutsu Kaisen's manga, announced that this very well could be his last Jump Festa as the manga is is likely coming to an end in 2024. Akutami stated, quote, This will probably definitely be the last Jump Festa where Jujutsu Kaisen is still in serialization. This is not too surprising, considering that JJK has been on its final arc for a good bit now, but the story is indeed coming to an end, at least for this iteration of the manga. This is pretty massive because that means this is yet another shonen series to not have chapters upon chapters upon chapters of content. Much like Demon Slayer, Attack on Titan, which really isn't a shonen, mind you, or whatever new age shonen you fancy, this is just yet another example in another series that isn't lasting for decades at a time. This is something I greatly appreciate because it's, you know, it's not wasting our time with pointless filler or drawn out plots. It's nice to just get in and then get out and move Move on to the next thing, but I must admit, it's gonna be rather sad to see this series go. Truly some of the best fighting I've ever seen in a shonen. I also must admit as well, it'll be nice to get away from all the controversy of this series too. Freeze bros, res, reze bros, rise up! The Rizzler is getting her own movie and it's coming out next year. MAPPA have announced that they indeed will be adapting the next arc of Chainsaw Man as a film all focused on the character Rize. This is by far one of the most popular female characters in all of Chainsaw Man, outside of maybe a couple others, which I won't mention here, but we're talking like Makima levels of popular. She's easily one of the biggest three females in the Chainsaw Man series. Now, in the manga, this is just a short arc from chapter 40 all the way to 52, so this is a very good candidate for an arc to be adapted into a film. As well, this film was leaked some time ago, but it was very vague on what it would be about, but we knew that it would indeed be getting a film along with a proper season two afterwards. So don't think we're just getting these films. This is clearly just a way for them to bridge the gap between seasons and take an arc that is very short and give it the proper care and attention that it deserves. But this is big news because Rize is by far one of the most popular characters in Chainsaw Man, and I think a lot of people are going to find that she resonates a lot with the audience of this series. Rize isn't just some waifu bait material, she really was a statement by Fujimoto at the time that he has the best written female characters in Shonen right now, quite possibly. And as I, a person who reads this series weekly, this is absolutely true. Especially if you're somewhat disappointed with how females are presented and handled in Jujutsu Kaisen, which I know is a sore point for many, Chainsaw Man really does excel at writing female characters and making them human first before making them sex appeal. But this film should quite easily be a slam dunk for the animators because the Bomb Girl arc is, to this day, one of the finest pieces of writing Fujimoto has been able to put together for the series, pretty much just as great as, well, what I think is his best writing ever, which is the entirety of Chainsaw Man Part 2 thus far. So, I am super hyped, super excited for this film, let me know what y'all think about this announcement, in particular down in the comments below. As well, for any manga fans of Chainsaw Man, please do check out my second channel. I cover the newest chapters of Chainsaw Man as they drop, and as well just released a what if video on what would happen if Himeno didn't die. If you're into Chainsaw Man, then also be sure to look out for Dan to Dan coming in fall 2024. Huh? The newest trailer was also revealed at Jump Festa, and this anime, I'm just gonna say it is going to be huge. I recently read the first two or so volumes of Dan to Dan's manga, and let me tell you all right here, right now, this is going to be a mega popular anime series. 
I think as a manga, it's even a tad underrated at an 8.2 on Mal, and, and this should honestly just adapt beautifully and very, very easily. So let me know in the comments below, and by dropping a like on the video if you actually want to see me make a video on Dan to Dan. Besides that, this one is dropping in fall 2024 and will be animated by Science Saru, the studio that recently brought you the incredible Scott Pilgrim Takes Off anime. So should be really really exciting. As well, the new trailer for the anticipated Kaiju number 8 by the legendary production IG finally came out, and sadly this anime has already received some mixed reception, but quite understandable. Some people bring up how the character designs are not nearly as good as they are in the manga due to the character designer being, well, the guy who did the Boruto character designs. I've also seen some people online just generally down on this series, calling it mid and just an MHA clone. Obviously, people on the internet will say whatever they need to say to stand out from the crowd, but when you actually watch the trailer, it seems pretty unique and original and actually pretty exciting. And it's absolutely no matter what people say, this is going to be a hit if I even think a little underrated due to the character design seeming very, well, flat. Either way, it's Kaiju, and when it comes to Kaiju, you can almost, keyword there, almost do no wrong. This anime is launching in spring 2024, so not a long wait for this one, and I think a perfect time for this anime anime to come out. Netflix on Twitter also announced a spin-off for One Piece titled Monsters 103 Mercy's Dragon Damnation. Pretty cool name. This new spin-off seems to follow Zoro and as well Mihawk, along with a dragon and whoever the hell this girl is. Seems to be written by Ichiro Oda, the creator of One Piece himself, and as the tweet says, quote, tells the tale of Ryuma, the legendary swordsman that hails from the land of Wano in One Piece. Now, as a person who is currently only knee-deep in Skype, Pia, this may just be as readable as the pwn glyphs are to random citizens of Alabasta, but it's coming in 2024 in January, so yeah, a couple weeks from announcements, we're gonna be getting this in our hands. Kinda crazy, but I am very excited to see the reception to it, and you know, once I get caught up, my own reaction. However, the biggest news coming out of this jump festa is that One Piece continues its unstoppable rise as to celebrate the 25th anniversary of One Piece, they announced some pretty huge stuff here. Like seriously, some game-changing stuff for this series. The first being that Wit Studios is back yet again to produce a brand new remake for the One Piece anime, starting all the way back at the beginning with the East Blue Saga. This is absolutely a massive win for Wit, and I think One Piece as a franchise and entity as well. Many people complain about the series being way too long and too challenging to get into, and for many others that do take the dive, will find that much of the animation from the 90s up until actually very recently even, has some of the most mediocre animation and pacing for a shonen series that I've ever seen, and especially one that started in the 90s. It really doesn't change much. That being said, the recent arcs in the anime are absolutely killer, and have some world-class animation, but that didn't happen until very recently, so it'll be nice for Wit to go back, reanimate it, and then introduce this series to a brand new audience. And I think this is a perfect fit for Wit as a studio as well, and as well, a complete slam dunk for One Piece. This announcement alone is amazing, but even better is that the remake is coming to Netflix. This continues the One Piece and Netflix brand integration we've seen since they've announced the live action for the series, and after the massive positive critical and fan reception that the adaptation got, it only made sense that they would find some way to continue the One Piece hype train going forward, and, well, this is how they're going to do it. However, this is going to be a little weird for some people, as we are going to have two One Piece series running at once. The original anime series, and now the Wit remake, which will most likely not even be completed before the series will end. They have over 1,000 chapters to adapt, so once again, let me know what you guys think about One Piece's new adaptation for the anime, and if you're hyped for it or any of the other topics I talked about here today. If you haven't, check out my Chainsaw Man channel, and while you're at it, my weekly anime podcast channel where I cover seasonal anime. Also, financially support the channel by becoming a patron, where you'll gain access to my mega One Piece arc reviews and first impressions. Thanks for watching. Bye.